All right, it's less than point five or zero point five trig with a calculator and also the graphs. So remember, when using a calculator with trig functions, it's really important that the calculator is set in the correct mode. If you're in degrees, use degrees. If radians, use radians. But in calculus, we will most entirely use radians in our studies. So please bring out your calculator. And yes, please change the mode into radians. So I'll press mode here. Make sure radians is highlighted. It's great and then you're ready to use the calculator. So really for the first example, it's just punching it into your calculator. What is sine two equal to? Now this two represents two in radians, so sine of two equal to, yes. And make sure, please, you give me three decimal places. Get used to doing that. AP loves, well actually not loves, requires you to have three decimal places, okay? Same thing for the next one here. Whoops, what did I just press? Next one, tangent. So tangent negative pi divided by 5, negative 0.726, so we're around to 7, okay, 727, negative, and then secant, remember secant is the same thing as 1 over cos, so it's 1 over cos of 1.3, I'll go 1 divided by, and then put a bracket around there, cos 1.3, close the bracket once, close the bracket twice, 3.738 and that's your value here 3 ah, 3.738 okay now how can we use a calculator to find the missing measures of these angles this is going back to the idea of soka toa now this is 5.5 radians and i have the opposite side i have the hypotenuse side so which trig ratio should i use you guessed right, sine, so sine 0.5 equals to opposite over hypotenuse. This just means that x is equal to 5 divided by sine 0 0.5 in radians. And now you have to just go ahead and use your calculator and type it in to get the answer of 10.429. Okay. Going the opposite way here, um, I don't know the angle, but I do know this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, so I should be thinking, hmm, tangent theta mm -hmm, equals to 2 over 5. In order to find theta, then you need to do the inverse tangent, or tan minus 1, of the ratio 2 fifths. And once again, it's time to use your calculator. Just type it in, inverse tangent, 2 fifths. Remember, I'm in radian mode, so my answer will be in radians, 0.38. So the answer is 0 0.380 radians. Okay? Um, I hope you remember what graphs of trig functions look like. Remember, they are periodic, right? They have a certain period or cycle. Hopefully, remember that sine and cosine all have periods of 2 pi. Of course, cosecant and secant would follow that. The curious thing is tangent's period is no longer 2 pi, but it's actually only pi. And from your pre-calculus 12 days, you should be able to easily graph these trig functions using these particular values of 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3, pi over 2. And then for tangent, we also throw in pi over 4 to help us out. But I hope this won't be too much of a trouble for you. Because guess what? Example number 3 says, let's graph all of these things out. Sine. Do you remember sine? Yeah, it starts at 0. And then at pi over 2, it goes up to 1, back to 0 for pi, negative 1, then 2 pi. Whee! That's one cycle, okay? Remember that the graph actually continues on, so you can just continue and repeat it if you wish, but like I said, one cycle, there you go. Cosine, hopefully you remember, it starts at 1, then goes to 0, then negative 1, back to 0, to 1, Make sure you curve it. Don't make straight lines. Now, cosecant is a little bit interesting. Remember, cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. Okay? Right up top, actually, over here. Equal to 1 over sine x. So, I'm going to draw sine x first. I'm going to actually draw two periods this time. 
Okay, and then now I want us to actually draw cosecant. And remember, since cosecant is just one over, it's the reciprocal. So hopefully you recognize that, hey, whenever I have a zero, the reciprocal of zero is one over zero or infinite or undefined. So we're gonna have these asymptotes appear. Remember this stuff from pre-calculus? And then remember the y value of one, well the reciprocal of one is just one, so those stay the same. I should put one more here. And the reciprocal of negative one is also negative one, those stay the same. And then remember what happens here? All these small values, which are between zero and one, when I do the reciprocal, they become big. So, woo! Oh yeah. And then these similarly become negatively big. Negatively big. Positively big. And there you go. Once again, this is two cycles. If I just wanted one cycle, drawing a graph like this would be good enough. All right? Now, hopefully you can do secant because it's very similar to what I just did. So I want you to quietly try secant yourself while I do it too. So you see it's very similar to cosecant, just that it's been shifted. Same thing with the sine graph, very similar to cosine, it's just been shifted. And once again, if I just want one complete cycle, this is fine. Okay. All right, tangent now. Hopefully remember tangent is zero at zero, and notice at pi over four, tangent is one. At negative pi over 4, tangent is negative 1, and the graph looks something like this. And then what happens at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2? You got it. Asymptotes. And that's why the period of this graph, can you see how the period of this graph here is equal to pi? Or the rest of them equal to 2 pi. And similarly, cotangent then is just the, res not, yeah, the reciprocal of tangent. And so if I were to quickly graph out the tangent graph again, and I repeated it, and if I asked you now to do the cotangent graph, remember, zeros become asymptotes. Asymptotes actually become zeros. Small becomes big and big becomes small, so hopefully you'll see the graph looking like this. And if this is too confusing for you right now, I'm just going to quickly erase the tangent graph so you can actually see the cotangent graph. And notice once again the cotangent period is also equal to pi. These are the basic, the six basic trig graphs that you need to know and visualize and memorize, okay? And then, once again, just like how we did um, all that shifting stuff before, yeah, I can do the same thing with all these graphs. Just be aware that, of course, the period gets affected by the factor of b. Um, once again, also, period is pi as a note for tangent and cotangent. Uh, we don't really talk about amplitude for tangent and cotangent, but uh, we do for sine and cosine. And then pretty much the rest of it is the same stuff that we did before with those parent graphs, shifting left, right, up, down, reflections, all that jazz. Okay? So, as a quick review now, can you quickly just sketch out these two graphs for me? And then after that, we'll do another example using identities. And I think that's it for trig review. So, how would you sketch this one out? Hopefully you can visualize this and say, hey, 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 that five in front represents my amplitude. So the amplitude is now five. I've got a negative which reflects or yeah, is a reflection in the X axis. And then I've got this one over two factor next to the X. That is this B factor or a horizontal expansion by a factor of two which means that 
if I expand it by a factor of 2, my period also gets doubled to 4 pi. Some people like using the formula. If you remember the formula was 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b, then you got 2 pi divided by 1 half, which also equals to 4 pi. Okay. So I'm going to try to graph out uh, these things first, the amplitude and the period. Um, I always remember starting at 1, oops, but now, wait, the amplitude is now 5, so it starts at 5, then 0, then negative 5, then 0, then, then 5, but wait, because now I can actually do this, but I forgot that negative sign, so that negative means I just have to reflect it. Do, 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 do. Done. And I want two cycles, so let's go again. Up, down, down. There you go. That's A. Okay. Part B, be careful. A very typical trick that many math teachers love to pull on their students. Make sure you factor out the two first. That then has what? Horizontal. That's right, compression by a factor of one half. So my period becomes now pi. And this, of course, is a shifting pi over four to the right. So I'm going to do the compression part first, and then we'll shift pi over four later on. So if I were to compress, no longer it's going to two pi, it's only going to pi. Start at zero, it ends at pi. So halfway between is pi over 2, and then halfway there is pi over 4. This is one cycle of the graph, but I need you to shift it pi over 4 to the right, so I guess I shift every single point one space to the right. And that looks good, but wait, I want actually two cycles, so I'm just going to copy it over here. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. And there you have it, erasing the one in red, the answer in green is your final answer. Good. Now we did learn a whole bunch of Pythagorean identities in uh, pre-calc 12. Not only Pythagorean identities, there were those double angle identities, all that kind of stuff. That will also come in handy in our calculus course. But the one that's most used often is this. And so I'm going to ask you to see if you can try and rewrite this equation in a form which only contains one trig ratio. Why do we need to do that? Because it's so much easier to solve algebraically when there's only one trig ratio. I'm thinking, hmm, you either keep it in sine or cosine. It's probably easier to keep it with sine because I could just take sine squared theta and move the cosine squared theta to the right-hand side. So looking at example number five, 2 cos theta minus, forget that sine squared now, make it 1 minus cosine squared, make that equal to negative 2. Go ahead now and distribute, simplify, and solve. You can also move the negative 2 to the other side to just save a little bit of time. Oh, I like what I see, because this just becomes cosine theta plus 1 times cosine theta plus 1. I'll call that a squared. And therefore, we really just want cosine of theta plus 1 equals to 0. And that means cosine theta equals to negative 1. And where is cosine theta equals to negative 1? I'll quickly draw my cosine graph. Yep, down here. So theta must equal to pi. Yay! And I'll leave this part up to you. Use your calculator verify solution. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but if you don't believe me, plug it in.